Hello everyone, sit back, relax and join us for story time, a story about two cops who got to witness more than they are used to. Our story today is called The Mirror. I used to be a cop, but I left the job after a wild paranormal experience. I'm not one to buy into superstitions, ghosts and demons. Nah, I never believed in that stuff. Until now. Sure, there are things that happen that just don't make sense, but trust me, it took more than a few flying spoons or a mysteriously opening door to freak me out enough to quit. Since the department decided there was no reason to keep this police report under wraps, I'm ready to share the details of the scariest night I've ever had. We got a call from dispatch about a noise complaint in a small neighborhood I won't name for privacy reasons. It was just me and my partner. Let's call him Paul and I'll go by Mike. We rolled up around midnight and the street was completely quiet. Everyone was definitely asleep. We parked our patrol car in front of the house in question and got out. I knocked on the door and announced ourselves. Police, is anyone home? An eight to ten year old girl opened the door just a crack. Hey there. I crouched down to seem less scary. Is your parent or guardian around? She shook her head. At first I figured she might have just had the TV up too loud and disturbed the neighbors. But before I could tell her to stay inside and lock the door, I heard a loud crash of silverware coming from what I guessed was the kitchen. The house was almost completely dark. The girl's response confirmed she was alone, which meant whoever made that noise was definitely an intruder. I asked the girl to step outside and turned to Paul. Hey, why don't you give her one of those lollipops you like to munch on when you're nervous? Paul shot me a look, but the girl giggled. They went to hang out by the car while I slowly pushed the door open wider. Police! If anyone's in this house, make yourself known. I couldn't enter the building without a warrant, so I had to hold back. I strained to see who was making the noise, but it was just too dark. If I had even the slightest hint of danger, I could search the place, but there was nothing. I left the door ajar and made my way back to Paul and the girl. Hey there, I don't think we've introduced ourselves yet. I'm Officer Mike, and this is my partner, Paul. Can I ask your name? Maribel. That's a lovely name. So, Maribel, where's your family? Right after I asked, the TV in the living room blared to life, cranked up to full volume. Paul and I spun around in shock, seeing the screen filled with static from outside. We put Maribel in the back seat of the patrol car for her safety since civilians aren't allowed in the front. Then, despite our instincts uh, telling us otherwise, we stepped inside the house. We flipped every switch we could find, but none of the lights worked. As we moved through the dark, I kept catching glimpses of someone in the mirrors. I thought it was Paul, but every time I turned around, he was nowhere in sight. When we finally made it back to the front door, we both jumped at the sound of running footsteps echoing down the hallway. We drew our guns and pointed them toward the noise. The footsteps grew louder and closer, but no one showed up. Suddenly, furniture started flying around, as if an unseen force was at work. We bolted out of the house and waited in the front yard. The footsteps faded, only to be replaced by the blaring police siren. I dashed to the car and turned off the siren. Looking back at Paul, who seemed rattled, I asked, You good, Paul? He pulled out a lollipop, unwrapped it, and popped it in his mouth. Yep, I opened the back door to check on Maribel. You all right? She nodded, so I headed back to Paul. I'm not sure what to think about all this, he said. Same here. No, seriously, forget about the invisible guy who just knocked everything over for a moment. Look at all the family photos and the pictures on the wall, he gestures toward Maribel. She's not in any of them. So what's on your mind? The footprints lead outside, then the siren blares. There are a million buttons in that car. What are the odds? Paul, are you saying Maribel is haunted? How else do you explain what we just witnessed? I'm sure there's a logical explanation. The TV turns on when we take Maribel outside, almost like it's nudging us to check it out. Something shows up in the mirrors, but then disappears. I remember wanting to tell him to stop, not because he was being irrational, but because he was making too much sense. I know you saw it. It was lurking around, then it dashed outside and jumped in the car, fiddling with all the buttons. I think a ghost is trying to reach the girl. I just stood there, unsure of how to respond, until Paul started walking back toward the house. Paul, what are you doing? It only appears in the mirrors. That's how we'll find it. I followed him inside and watched as he grabbed a book from the counter and smashed the nearest mirror. What's wrong with you? That belongs to someone. He took a shard and handed me another, saying, It's not every day you get to catch a ghost. We pointed our flashlights around the house, waiting for something to show up in the broken glass. I remember praying to God that nothing would appear. 
but it did. I freaked out as it swung its red, bony arm at me. It tore right through my uniform, making me stumble forward and drop the glass, which shattered into smaller pieces. It kept clawing at my shirt and skin, but stopped when Paul fired his weapon. I heard its screech fade away as Paul helped me up. We both rushed outside to find Maribel gone from the back seat. It was tough trying to explain what went down in the department without sounding completely crazy. The police cameras we were counting on to back us up mysteriously shut off as soon as we stepped into the house. Whatever did, that must have turned them off without us even noticing. The only part of our wild story that our police captain took seriously was about the girl, Maribel. The captain pulled up a missing person report and asked if she was the girl we saw. She was. It's only been a few days since I hung up my badge to keep whatever pride I had left. I just want to say to anyone who reads this and to whoever it might reach, next time a door swings open by itself or things start moving around in your place, check the mirrors. Be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe for more stories.